this video, we will show you how to fit the door frame for hinged doors. We will show you how to secure the door frame to your polytunnel on both soil and solid bases. In this video, we will show you how to fit doors that open inwards. If you would like your doors to open outwards, this can only be done once the polytunnel cover has been fitted. We will show you how to achieve this at the end of the video. Here are the parts you'll need. The door frame comprises of 7 pieces of 100mm by 47mm by 3m timber, which are for the four door frame posts, the door frame lintel and the base timbers between the door frame posts. The remaining pieces supplied in the pack are 19mm by 38mm by 1.8m battens, which are used later when fitting your polytunnel cover. Start by running a taut string line across the width of your polytunnel on the end hoop. Determine the centre of your polytunnel width by measuring 13 feet from the corner hoop from the centre of the tube. From this central position, measure 114 centimetres towards each corner hoop. From the central position, now measure 220 centimetres towards each corner hoop. This identifies the position of your four door posts. If you are fitting your polytunnel onto an earth base, you will be required to excavate a hole 30 centimetres square and 40 centimetres deep for each hole. If fitting to a solid base such as concrete or timber, the door frame post will be secured to the ground using brackets. We will show you this process shortly. We will now install the two inner door frame posts. Reposition one of the door frame posts into the hole or onto the solid base, ensuring the door frame post is positioned 114 centimeters from the center mark to the inside of the door frame post. The two inner door frame posts will be fitted to the rear of the door rail. They will exceed the top of the door rail and will be required to cut down after fitting. To secure the top of the door frame post to the door rail, fit a P-clip onto the door rail. The prongs of the P-clip should run down the rear of the door rail and fix the front face of the door frame post where it is held in place with bolts. Using a 9mm wood drill bit, drill through the timber on the marks. Push a bolt through the P-clip and drilled holes so that the thread is on the inside of the polytunnel. Loosely secure in place with a washer and nut. When securing to the ground, ensure that the door frame post is positioned 114cm from the centre mark to the inner edge of the door frame post. It is critical that the door frame post is vertical. Use a spirit level on the front and side face of the post. Once you are happy with the new position, tighten the nuts on the P-clip and secure the P-clip in place with a self-drilling screw. If on soil, backfill the hole with concrete. We recommend using a concrete that is one part cement and five parts aggregate. We also recommend postcrete. This ready-made mix is supplied in 20 kilogram bags, requires no mixing, you simply add water. Approximately one bag per hole will be required. If on a solid base, fix the base of the plate to the floor using shield anchors for concrete or coach screws for timber. Position the door frame post plate on the ground on the inside of your polytunnel. Make a mark through the centre hole, then remove. If on a concrete base, drill a hole 8cm deep using a 14mm masonry drill bit. Separate the bolt and washer from the sleeve and insert through the hole in the door frame post plate and then screw on the sleeve. Locate the shield anchor into the hole and firmly tighten using a 17mm spanner. If on a timber base, drill a pilot hole 7cm deep using a 7mm timber drill bit. 
Finally, screw the plate to the door post using the screws provided. Cut off the excess of the inner door frame post in line with the top of the door rail. We will now fit the door to the door post. Ensure you leave the concrete for an adequate amount of time to set. Position the T-hinge internally onto the door frame post. Ensure the chamfered holes are visible. Use the screws provided in the commercial door frame kit to secure the hinge to the door post. Position the door, ensuring there is enough ground clearance for the door to fully open and close. With the first inner door post and door fitted, we will move on to fit the second. Position the second door post in the hole and loosely fix it to the door rail with a P-clip. Temporarily screw two self-drilling screws into the edge of the door. This will ensure that there is a consistent gap between the two doors and enable them to open and shut properly. Have one person hold the second door up to the first one and adjust the door post. Once the door post is tight up to the door, secure it in place by screwing the hinges onto the door post. It is critical that the door frame post is vertical. Use a spirit level on the front and side face of the post. With everything in the correct position, firmly tighten the nuts on the P-clip and secure the P-clip in place using a self-drilling screw. Secure the door frame post to the floor using the method demonstrated earlier. Check that both of your doors can open with enough ground clearance. If needed, adjust the height of the doors accordingly. You can now remove the self-drilling screws. We will now install two outer door frame posts. These are to provide additional strength to the door structure. The two outer door frame posts will need to be cut to size prior to securing them as they are fitted under the door rail. Position an outer door frame post to the hole or onto the solid base. Ensure the door frame post is vertical using a spirit level. Mark the uprights of the door post under the door rail. Cut the post on this mark. Reposition the outer door frame post, ensuring the inner edge of the door frame post is 220 centimeters from the central position. Fit a P-clip onto the door rail. Both prongs of the P-clip should then run down the front face of the door post where it is held in place with bolts. Mark the position of the holes as before and using a 9mm wood drill bit, drill holes through the timber. Push a bolt through the P-clip and drill holes so that the thread is on the inside of the polytunnel. Loosely secure with a washer and nut. When securing to the ground, ensure that the door frame post is positioned 220 centimeters from the center mark to the inner edge of the door frame post. It is critical that the door frame post is vertical. Use a spirit level on the front and side face of the post. Once you are happy with the position, tighten the nuts on the P-clip and secure the P-clip in place with a self-drilling screw. Secure the door frame post to the floor using the method demonstrated earlier. Secure the second outer door frame post using the same method. We are now ready to fit the door frame lintel. The door lintel is supplied in two pieces, 100mm by 50mm timber, 3 meters long. The lintel spans between the two outer door frame posts and runs across the front face of the inner posts. Put the two pieces of the door lintel up together and join them by using a right angled joiner placed on the opposite corners with twisted nails. Approximately 30 nails per plate will suffice. Offer the door frame lintel up, position one end flush with one door post and make a mark at the other end and cut. Reposition the lintel, ensuring there is a five millimeter gap between the top of the doors and the bottom of the lintel. Ensure the door frame lintel is level and use a 4mm wood drill bit to drill a pilot hole. Use a 150mm screw to secure to the door post. Repeat at the other side.
on the inner post, drill a 9mm hole through both lintel and the inner post. Push a 110mm M8 cup square bolt through the drilled hole so that the thread is on the inside of the polytunnel. Fit a washer, then screw on the nut and then tighten. The joints can now be reinforced with nail plates on both sides. Position a nail plate equally across the joint and secure in place with twisted nails. We can now fit the timber base. This piece of timber is between the door post and the outer door post. Position a piece of 100mm by 47mm timber so it butts up with the outside edge of the inner door frame post and runs past the outer face of the outer door frame post. Make a mark on the base timber where it reaches the outside edge of the outer door frame post and cut on this mark. To secure the base timber to the door posts, drill a hole using a 4mm drill bit through the inner door post in line with the base timber and screw the two together with a 150mm screw. On the outer post, drill a 9mm hole through both the outer door frame post and the base timber. Push a 110mm M8 cup square bolt through the drilled hole so that the thread is on the inside of the polytunnel. Fit the washer and screw on a nut, then tighten. The joints can now be reinforced with nail plates on both sides. Position a nail plate equally across the joint and secure in place with twisted nails. Repeat this for the base timber on the opposite side. Now we will fit the door drop spikes that keep your door from blowing in the wind. Door drop spikes are fitted to the outside face of the door on the opposite side to the hinges. Measure up from the bottom of the door 9cm and make a mark. Position a door drop spike guide bracket so the bottom of the bracket is flush with this mark. Mark the position of the two slots in the bracket and across the top. Now reposition the bracket so the bottom of the bracket is flush with the top mark and mark the position of the two slots again. Using a 9mm wood drill bit, drill a hole through the door for the four slots. On the inside face of the door, insert pronged T-nuts into each hole. Bolt the two angled brackets onto the door with the slot on each bracket at the top. Close the door to the required position, slide the drop spike down through both brackets and mark the position on the ground. Open the door and bury the tube in the required position. If your polytunnel is on a hard base, the housing tube is not required. Simply drill a hole using a 9mm drill bit to an appropriate depth. Repeat this process on both doors. You can find more videos to help you build your polytunnel and construct.firsttunnels.co.uk We also have a construction helpline if you require any further assistance.